Welcome to the Monday, August 19th meeting of the Montpelier Design Review Committee. I will let staff and members introduce themselves. Hannah Smith. Liz Pritchett. Meredith Crandall, staff. Stephen Everett. Eric Gilbertson. Benjamin Jean. We are an advisory committee to the Development Review Board. We will listen to the applications and move them forward. And does anybody have anything to offer ahead of time? Otherwise, do I hear a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. All in favor of the agenda, raise your hand. We'll go forward to the first application for 535 Stonecutters Way, River Station Properties. You want to come, come up and come have up. a seat? And you represent River Station or Sun Common? Sun Common. And give us your names. And just make sure you talk into the microphone. Sure. It doesn't pick up very well otherwise. Best. Sean Fitch, uh, Montpelier resident and employee of Sun Common. I'm the commercial project engineer for all the commercial work that they do. Uh, I'm designing okay. commercial systems Last for them. Is Fitch? Yep, F I T C H. F -I -T -C -H. Yep. I've been designing commercial solar arrays for them for about five years and designed residential systems for them previous to that. My name is Jesse Klink, and I work at Suncommon as well as the commercial project assistant. And spell your last name. K-L-I-N-C-K. And describe your installation, proposed installation for the rooftop at River Station. Sure. Uh, it's a 64 kilowatt DC, 43.2 kilowatt AC uh, solar photovoltaic system. Uh, it'll be connected directly to the grid. Um, uh, that's about it. Uh, 162 modules on the roof. Um, there's not much else to see beyond what you see in sort of our first cover image. It's just modules on the roof and then all of the service equipment will be down in the service enclosure that's e existing on the side of the building where their other meters and entrance section are. Did you do this one? Yes. Yep. Sign that as well. Any, any pushback from the neighbors on the roof? For this one? Yeah. No. Nope. The panels flat on the roof, flush to the roof? Yeah, they're flush to the roof. They sit about five inches above the roof surface or something like that, so they look pretty well blended into the roof. They'll look about like the skylights do that are on that roof now. Those pop, sit up a little mm -hmm. bit above the roof surface. Are they different colors than the roof? Or? Yeah, so the roof is a corrugated steel that's a gray in color, and those modules will have the typical solar panel look, which is a sort of deep bluish uh -huh. color. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 So this is on round, so it's clipped to the Does it have a standing signal? It's not. It's a sinusoidal wave corrugated steel roof. Um, and so, yeah, they'll, there are some attachment points that will attach into that roofing. And then we put horizontal rails that sit on top of those attachments. And then the modules sit on top of the rail and are clamped onto the rail. And that's a permanent installation? Um, yeah, I guess you would say that. At any point in time, if something needed to be serviced, you can pull the modules up. Everything's, you know, bolted in place, so you can undo things as need be. But yeah, we would consider that it would stay up there for the life of life expectancy of the panels. Quick question, just for my own information: Where are the? Where is the wiring? Where does that enter the building? <laughs> either on the outside or inside or through the roof or under the roof or? Uh, right. In the case of this project, the wiring from the modules um, is routed and connected to one another underneath the modules. So mm -hmm. within the array itself where there are panels on the roof, you don't see any wiring there. Um, the modules are very close to one another. Right. So you really, if you were sitting on top of a module, you could probably look in between and see a wire, but yep. from any more than a few feet away, you can't see. And then um, the wiring will exit the array through one conduit that drops over the roof edge and would be 
blend it in and run down the side of the building down to where the service equipment is on what would be the north side of the building. So they have they have an existing service fence or you know area that's over here where their meters and main entrance section are and main disconnect. That's where we'd put our equipment as well, and so we would run our single conduit down into that area to connect to our equipment. Conduit will come over the gable and wrap around the patient and down the side. That's the plan as of right now, yep. Um, although, yeah, exactly, yeah, that's a representation of it. Though, you know, something I'm thinking of right now actually is that is a large overhang right there, and we could easily penetrate too so that we're not wrapping that. Yeah. So you're coming you flush down the building and just through Yeah. Because that, yeah, that's like a, you can almost see the underside of the roof in there. Oh, you can, yeah. Yeah, yeah there's a little overhang there, yeah. And now that I think about it, it'd be pretty easy for us to come down through that. I imagine our electricians, when they see it, would probably prefer to do it that way. Yeah, so. just come straight down. Yeah. 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 So, uh, snow loads, back up onto the skylight, those considerations are taken out. Yeah, we deal with that a lot, um, and so as you can see, there are some cutouts below those skylights. We try to maintain some space around the skylights and have enough experience with roofs like this and, uh, you know, the general snow loads that we get in the area, and that's usually enough that the snow will kind of, as you get it, it'll sit for a little while, and then it tends to kind of slough down into those cutouts that we left there, um, and thus far, we've issues with skylight leaks what's, the, like what's the pitch on that roof it's about 18 degrees yeah, so is that a 412 right around. probably be visible from across the river it will be it will be uh -huh. yeah absolutely is, i imagine it's similar to what this is i guess that probably is visible too I mean, yeah though that's a little bit of a steeper pitch roof yeah uh -huh. so it's you know when you're looking i drove by today to take a look at it and of course stone cutters is this is a little higher than caledonia is certainly in relation to where you are when you're driving by on river street um and then of course the pitch of the roof is a little less too so the actual you know view of what you'd see for mm -hmm. modules will sort of be flattened a bit more yes. than it is at caledonia mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. but you certainly can still see them What was the pitch on Caledonia's? Again, just out. Ooh, good question. I'm not sure I remember. That might have been like a 612. I have to look back at my records to. Yes, yeah, so you can totally see there. Versus expected generator. There. All the power that that building would need. Oh, that's a different things. angle. Oh, that's a good question. I'm, use a I'm not, on the I'm not sure view. how that was sold. I, I designed them. I don't know what their dry line across there and put was. A on it, it'll tell you. It's at least covering the tenant's um, stone environmental. Tenant. So stone's the main off table, yeah. yeah, and it's at least covering their usage. I don't know if it's covering others. Mm -hmm. They're the main tenant. They're the ones who want to install it. So if there if there were excess credits, I assume they'll. You know, allow those to be absorbed by another meter or another account someplace. So the maintenance and all of that, if the panel, the panel goes out, you guys are contracting for these things. How does that work for the tenant? If they uh, have an O&M contract with us, then we would. I think we ha are monitoring, right? Yeah. Will they be getting an O&M? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that would be us. Yeah. So we monitor the system for performance. Um, that's done just about daily um, by somebody who follows up on all of the systems that we put in. They check for performance. To see Both commercial and residential you follow up on? Um, com well, commercial, uh, we certainly monitor the systems. Residential, we don't because it's thousands of yeah. systems. And the homeowners are ones who tend to they keep track of that stuff a little more closely. <laughs> they want to know what their production is doing. So, and they, you know, there's an app that all of our customers get to use that's associated with the inverter manufacturer that was on their project. And mm -hmm. They all have great monitoring platforms. So, yeah, the residential customers are usually just checking their own monitoring. And they let us know if anything's going wrong. Uh, commercial customers are less vigilant because they're usually business owners and they got other things on their mind. So most of the time, we we see an issue if there is an issue before they do. Um, 
But yeah, it would be us. We do all that sort of maintenance if the panel needs to be replaced. That's rare. We don't see that a lot, but optimizers go out sometimes. Yeah. There's not a whole lot else that goes wrong. Not a lot of moving parts, so you don't usually see many issues. Yeah. Are you going to have to install any uh, safety equipment to accommodate the install? Maintenance? Uh, we won't have to. There happens to be D-rings already up on the ridge of that roof, so we did an eval of the roof surface and sent a couple guys up there to get some measurements and check stuff out, and there's already some D-rings that are mounted up on that ridge line, so that's what so we would... Kill the have to go up like that. No, no. During installation, that's what we would do is just tie off here. So, ropes. So, safety ropes. Anybody have any other questions as far as the uh, design review aspects of the application? Industrial use of an industrial build. Yes. As far as I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll read through. There's a section of criteria because it is in the district. Evaluation criteria. Preservation of reconstruction of the appropriate historic style of the proposed projects in the historic district involves an historic structure. I wouldn't call it preservation, so I would just say not applicable here. Harmony of exterior design with other properties in the district. Acceptable. Compatibility of proposed exterior materials with other properties in the district. Acceptable. Compatibility of proposed landscaping. None proposed in this application. Prevention of the use of incompatible designs, buildings, color schemes, or exterior materials, acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, acceptable. Recognition of and respect for view quarters and significant vistas, including gateway views of the city and state house, acceptable. All in favor of the application as proposed, raise your hand. You can sign that in the lower left, right above my name. Sure. And you're going to start work. Uh, what do we say? September 3rd. We're going to try be about two weeks worth of construction. Try to keep things moving. More get those, get those guys done probably. before the roof starts to frost over. Yeah. It gets slick. <laughs> I'm sure it'll come sooner than we want it to. <laughs> and this will move forward to administrative. Administrative. Or? Administrative approval. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And Thank so, you. what after that? It goes to uh, administrative approval. Yeah. And so, so it'll how go does that work? Back down to the planning office, and um, it's in Audra's queue to just issue the permit. Okay. Because there's no, I don't think we had any other issues with this. This was just here because of design review. Okay. It's not affecting site plan or anything like that. Great. All right. So give it a give it a couple much. days. If you haven't heard anything in a couple of days, give us a call. Okay. We'll do. Yeah. Anybody thinks of any other questions, you can always call them and ask. We're happy to chat. <laughs> you work out of the Waterbury location? Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's us. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. The next application is for Bailey Avenue, Vermont State Employees Credit Union. Come forward and Hello. tell us about your rain garden. And you are from the Conservation Commission? Hi, uh, my name is Sarah Hoffmeyer. I'm a local landscape designer. Um, I am on the tree board. My name Spell your last name for uh, the records. Took my husband's last name. That was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Mine was Mitchell go going into it. Um, it's Hoffmeyer, H-O-F-F-M-E-I-E-R. <laughs> German. <laughs> I brought... Um, I only brought one copy. I should have brought more. Um, this was the final presentation that we gave to the Vermont Credit Union. So we have the small. Oh, we you have the, small, have yeah, the small Everything one. came in, so we have the small Eight. version in the packet. So okay, everybody has it. Lovely. Well, if we're referencing anything, this is a little larger, so I can hold it up. Awesome. Um, so this is a little backwards. Um, <laughs> I apologize. The timing was we worked with we partnered with VYCC on this project, and they had one window to help us, and it was August 12th to 16th. So we've we've already started construction. Um, 
And here's a picture of the construction. Thought I'd bring it along just to show. Hard working group of kids, crew members. Sorry, I'm not supposed to call them kids. Um, but a great group. And the crew leaders, Justin Geibel and Adam, was the on site crew leader, were fabulous to work with. Uh, but we did have to take advantage of using them that week. So we did already start, but it has, it's not finished just yet. Um, the planting is done, but we're still constructing the four bay and the filter strip, um, which are really important components of the rain garden. So that'll happen this week. And it was a big hole, by hand. It was a big hole, yeah. <laughs> we did. Um, one of the drawbacks, I'll just be very frank about it, um, I really love VYCC, but uh, one of the drawbacks was they didn't quite finish in time, and so we didn't crush their morale. My husband would go in at night. I think you might have seen him. Yeah, and he came oh. with his machine oh. Oh. <laughs> and dug out a little more. <laughs> Poor guy. Neither neither party was happy about that, but <laughs> don't tell VYCC. I don't think they actually knew. Um, but yeah, it was a huge hole. We, we uh, removed 35 yards of material. Wow. and then brought in with Vermont Compost Company um, about 28 yards of the planting medium because uh, the main purpose is to filter in slow water and then um, the plants actually, and just nerd out for one second just in case you haven't heard of this, um, the plants uh, do something called phytoremediation, some of the plants. And that's where the storm water is coming from the parking lot, and it can pick up oil and gasoline from the cars, the breakdown of asphalt, tires. Uh, there are a few plants in this design that are able to suck up those hydrocarbons, the pollutants, and break them down in the tissue of the plant. Such a cool thing. Phytoremediation, psyched about it. I won't go any further. If, you're, if you want to know more, I will nerd out with you more. <laughs> but anyway, that the main purpose of the rain garden so is to slow, filter, but also clean the water. Yeah. And so far, it's, so far so good. Um, we haven't hit anything that was a surprise. We didn't find any buried propane tanks or anything crazy when we dug our hole. <laughs> no dinosaurs. It was. The top 18 inches were basic construction fill, pretty gravelly. Uh, and then we hit our clay. And just so you know, you cannot construct a rain garden on clay alone, but we lucked out in having that 18 inches of construction fill because we have horizontal infiltration. Mm -hmm. So if it was all clay, it would have been a swimming pool. That's not a rain garden. <laughs> but it's okay to have the bottom be uh, impermeable, essentially. Yeah. So what are your top three plants for breaking down? Oh, I'll tell you, yes. Um, so one, the big one is Indian grass. Super hard to find. I had to go down to Massachusetts to get it. It looks like a weed, but um, it is a powerhouse of a plant. It's usually, you find them mainly in prairie areas, um, but it's actually native to Vermont, more southern Vermont, not really Montpelier. Um, let's see, uh, goldenrod, oddly enough, is a great plant. A lot of people look at it as a weed. Something to know, too, about weeds, you see them growing in places where other plants can't grow because they can deal with really tough situations and pollutants. So a lot of the what we call weeds are really good plants that can break down. And if they're not breaking it down, they're at least trapping it. Um, <laughs> something like sunflower, it's a bioaccumulator where it traps the pollutants, so you have to harvest it at the end of the year, or as it dies, it'll just put it right back into the soil again. Mm -hmm. um, there are a couple of cattails is another example of that. Um, but no matter what, it's slowing it and trapping it so it's not going in the water. So it's still very useful. Um, little blue stem is in there. That's another one. Um, <laughs> I could go on. <laughs> Uh, but then we have a lot of just great natives for pollinators. So we put in butterfly weed, which is an orange blooming, and that's the main host for monarch butterflies, the caterpillar. Nice. Yeah. There's a bunch of others that we put in for wildlife. There was one non-native that I put in that's from Europe. It's one of my favorites, but um, it's, a, it's a sage, mm -hmm. but it reblooms continuously throughout the year. So I had to put it in. It's a beautiful brilliant purple 
and it's a, and it's well behaved. It does not move. It really isn't a spreader. So I you had to put it in throughout the year. What <laughs> or throughout the growing season? <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's my year. <laughs> yeah, I'm asleep in the winter. <laughs> How much yeah. of the water off the uh, mm. parking lot are you actually capturing? Like, I, it looks like you're adding this curbing. Yes. And, and yes. I mean, I have no idea how the storm is designed over there, but. Yeah, Amy McCrellis from Stone Environmental did our um, the major calculations for it. Um, there are four or five, five actually storm drains on site that capture different areas throughout the property. This one, and I don't know the volume of water that it can take, um, but she calculated it so that it had to be 420 square feet. The reason why we put the curbing in was a lot of water comes out of that last drive through closest to the river, um, and it was going right into the storm drain. So we had to direct it into our four bay to get it so we can clean it up and slow it down before, hopefully we never even have to use the storm drain. Or that's like the overflow. But the goal is everything is dealt with in the rain garden. Um, unfortunately, it's in the floodplain, so that eventually, in 100 years, we'll have maybe not 100, maybe less than that. Five. Uh, yeah, five. <laughs> <laughs> Two. Okay. I just want the place to be established by the time we get our flood. Um, but that's the only downside to the rain garden, is that when it floods, we'll have to do some major reconstruction. So it's <laughs> capturing half the water coming off of the parking lot or a quarter or like there's four storm drains you said? So yeah, four, so it's only I think there's the five. It's only doing the work of one storm about drain. one fifth, right. Yeah. So there's an opportunity for them to put in four more rain gardens or it could be something else. It could be a bioswale or a retention pond. We'd, it would have to be site specific. Yeah. I don't think that has ever flooded since the like floods. No? Just enough higher than yeah. yeah. I hope. I hope. I want those plants to stay. <laughs> the water got to the underside of the bridge in '93 or '92, yeah. yeah. whenever 92. it was. 92. Yeah, they, they closed that bridge. 311, '92. They closed the bridge, and the water yeah. got to the bottom of the structure, but it didn't go over yeah. over yeah. the bridge. And I'm not sure if it got up into the corner of that lot or not. I think. Yeah, not, I don't think it got into the corner of that lot. It was at Bailey and yeah. at. Yeah. Perry's. The corner. Bailey and yeah. State. Mm. Bailey yeah, and Bailey State and State, State got, it. got it. That's quite a bit lower. Right. But that is lower. Right. right. Auto yeah. in that area, I think, got flooded. Yeah. I was living in the corner of hey. Bailey and Baldwin, so. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> what about the informational signs? What's, what's that all about? Is that you or is that somebody? Yeah, VSCCU is leading the charge with the informational sign. They're hoping to put up something permanent that. Um, I, it's still in the works. I yeah, haven't it, seen any. It'll um, need to come come here before the sign goes okay. up. Make sure yeah. they label the. Tell us a little bit about the plants, like yes. you did. Yes, mm -hmm. I will. Other people want to <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, this and this because this isn't there isn't actually a structure really going on here. Mm. This probably wouldn't have come before design review, except that in Western Gateway there's some sort of landscape specific things mm -hmm. that catch it. Um, so. That's why the rain garden as a whole is here. Yeah. So this is not a really fair question. Well, it is a fair question. Come hit me with it. <laughs> due to our process, like, yeah. what prevented you from being able to get this to us before? Uh, was it a surprise that uh, when BYCC was available, or was it scheduled no. differently? No. Um, I actually didn't know that it for what you were saying, that it did, that it needed to come here um, until a week and a half ago. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> yeah. Aud Aud um, Audra, neither Audra nor I caught at first that, because we're like, oh, it's not a structure. Right. It doesn't need anything. Yeah. And then it was a, oh, wait, let's look a little <laughs> more carefully at the Western Gateway District specific, you know, specific guidelines. Yeah. And it's not actually, like, what you have in here for landscaping in large part still seems to relate to when you're building a structure, but there's some language that's a little iffy. Mm. And so we figured better safe than sorry and bring it here. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't seem like something that we normally get, but yeah. I wanted to clarify that. Mm -hmm. And we did, 
I feel pretty confident about it because I did consult with so many experts in the field. So Mark Companion from the Lake Champlain Basin Sea Grant. Um, I worked with UNH Stormwater Center to the Vermont uh, specs for stormwater management are actually not quite right and uh, they're being redone. And so I went with UNH and we went with the latest information. Um, Amy has been fantastic. I've asked her a bunch of questions. So even if I didn't know them, I'm surrounded by people that do. <laughs> so it was uh, yeah, a well thought through process by a lot of other people that are good at what they do. Really just the player person. Comments, questions, suggestions, and we'll run down through the criteria, same sure. criteria. Preservation or reconstruction of the appropriate historic style if the proposed projects in the historic district or involves an historic structure. I would say that the plantings are acceptable under that criteria. Harmony of exterior design with other properties in the district, acceptable. Compatibility of proposed exterior materials with other properties in the district, acceptable. Compatibility of proposed landscaping, acceptable. Prevention of the use of incompatible designs, buildings, color schemes, or exterior materials, acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, no lighting or utilities involved, I assume. No. Okay, not applicable. Recognition of and respect for view quarters and significant vistas, including gateway views of the city and state house, acceptable. All in favor of the application as proposed, raise your hand. Certainly wouldn't have scored spirited views since it's all the book. But it would be easy to reverse. Yes. One dump truck load. Oh, one flood. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 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 One flood. <laughs> <laughs> and again, if you would sign above my name in the lower left sure. there. Do you have a pen? Good. Mm. We oh. can add that, but I mean, it's a separate sign application. Yeah. I can just, I just can make a note. I can remind the SCCU as well. I just said that we made a notation that an information sign will be proposed and submitted for approval at a later date when final details are determined. Is that okay? okay. Thank you. Sure. That way we can get written and verbal notice. As much okay, information so of the sign, I would suggest something inside the credit union. Okay. You know, signs are difficult. Yeah. Yeah, it's out of my area of expertise. <laughs> 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 you have to say everything. Yeah. Five words. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Thank you Thank very you. much. Sarah. Thank you. Good luck with your yeah. project. Thanks. <laughs> and reviewing the minutes for the first meeting for July the 8th. Myself, Eric, Steph. You look fine. We were the three here. Any questions, comments, suggestions on that one, or do I hear a motion to approve? So moved. All in favor of approval of the July the 8th? That one is approved. And how about July the 22nd?
myself, Seth, Liz, Ben. Any changes or notations on that one? Do I hear a motion to approve the July the 22nd? So moved. I'll second. All in favor of the July 22nd? And the last one for August the 5th. Steve, Hannah, Ben. With the 29 College Street on the second page, it just says an option would be to add a light at the door. It doesn't actually talk about the project. Uh, yep, I didn't even, I didn't, honestly, I didn't even look at these because I wasn't here. So um, I will fix. We gave them an option yep. under the optional. We had a, they hadn't proposed, but we gave well, them the option. The application was for the Yeah, there's nothing yeah. in here saying what the application was for. No, I, yes. I, I see what you're, I see exactly what you're saying. Do you want me to bring it back, or do you want me to just have a brief description <coughs> in there? I think just, just your <coughs> application was for the door. Yeah, yeah. And yeah oh, I, I looked at what the, I, I know what yeah. this application is for, because it's also having to go to DRB today. Um, but I didn't proof these because I wasn't so there. So while they ran, we just, if they had any intention of adding lighting for the doorway mm -hmm. in the back corner for the parking lot, we gave them the option. It said to add a light at the yep. door, change the light at the other door, and then they also had an option on the back corner of the building near the parking area to put a motion to yep, detect I, the light. I read the okay. actual form that you filled out because it could be brass or black. Yes. And I had that in there so I because I had to have a report okay. on it for the DRB staff report. So I, I know what happened. I just didn't proof the minutes because That's okay. I wasn't I it wasn't part of my routine because I wasn't okay. there at the meeting. <laughs> so with that note I'll fix that. Yep. They'll hear a motion to approve those minutes. So I'll second. Okay. All in favor? So that one is approved. Yeah. Yes. With edits. Any other business or anything anybody has to suggest or offer? Updates on what's going on. With? Oh. No. I have. I have nothing on that. There's, um, we're supposed to be getting a decision from the court on all of the various motions, uh, motions for summary judgment and um, to, to get rid of appellants, I think, next month. I think it was supposed to be by the end of this August, this month, but likely it wouldn't come out until at least September, just with the way the court has been a little yeah, slow on price. things. So hopefully we'll, hopefully by the second meeting of September, we'll know something. Yeah, what about the building that's going next to Shaw's? Is that happening? Or not? I, I don't think that they're going to decide on that until they know what's going on with the parking garage. <coughs> <coughs> because, well, just because if, if the parking garage doesn't happen, <coughs> then they might apply to do something else on that parcel. Oh, really? Yeah, they don't have to, they don't have to build the building that they got the permit for. If that's what you're talking about. Well, no, I just thought I didn't know that they were that interconnected. They're they're trying to keep their options open. I think is my understanding. So. And technically, who's doing that? I know that the trust backed out. Yeah, I don't even know because I I don't. Oh, they did. The last, my, last I know, the trust backed out, and it was Ribellini, and I'm not sure who else had some options or are part of that, but I'm not sure who has the rights on the property at this same, point. Same design? I I don't know. Last I heard was was that uh, what was the Moat Family Trust or whatever it was called had backed out there. So then you know more than I do. I don't, unless it comes down to my office for a zoning permit or I hear rumors about that, I tend to stay out of that and leave that to Mike Miller who lets me know if there's something I need to know about. I don't even know who owns the property now. If they sold out their interest in the property or... It's too bad. 
could have been. Yeah. You gotta figure out how to get the trucks behind there first. Yeah. Apparently, the, what was designed originally. The designers, I guess, designed it to be attractive, but not necessarily. They might have thought about involving a, um, a tractor trailer driver. <laughs> <laughs> in the design process. <laughs> I'm so impressed with those guys that go over to the Shaws that pull in by uh, uh, Oh, they Sarduchi's swing around and, and yeah. they back, back across Main across. Street. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Quickly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Nobody has anything else. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Why not? Here a second. All in favor of adjournment, raise your hand. Meeting is adjourned.